Hello, my chess friends. As I have promised a few days before, I'll be returning with more theoretical approaches in regards with bishop versus knight in the ending, middle game and ending, where the knight is doing better. So previously we looked at the situation in which bishop was happier than the knight because the position was open. Now the position is closed and hopefully the opponent's king won't have too much of an activity or we can just simply diminish their activity. And now knights can gain outpost squares where they can place themselves and attack multiple targets. We're going to be looking at the practicalities of it in just a second. And the opponent's pawns also should ideally be be on the same color as, as their bishop. As you can see now here, there is a pawn stifling, blocking the bishop to moving out. And also the Viking would like to gain a bit of access and attacking you. So in order for us to just stop this from happening, guys, we are going to play something like d4. What does that mean? Fixing a pawn which blocks the bishop and does not allow the Viking to moving closer. Okay, so that's that's one idea. They try to challenge your pawn. Don't capture the pawn here because you're going to be helping white to establish a very a very um, strong pawn center here, and also the king will be gaining access. That's actually more problematic. So we mustn't allow this to happen, but instead centralize our king. Another important idea: move your king towards the middle of the board. Centralize the king uh, uh, at the end stage of the game. King goes on e7. Takes. Now you must take the pawn, obviously. King tries to go via the b3, b4, but you're not just going to sit and wait them doing that. You're going to get your own king into action. And when they get in closer, now it's time to play a couple of very nice uh, threats for king ideas, which would be only beneficial for yourselves here. you got a nice outpost on e3. If you remember, the outpost is the square one in which you can place ideally a knight, which can't be challenged by a pawn or by a bishop on the same uh, color. So the knight here would be incredibly, incredibly uh, frustrating for white. You're still going to be playing this with check. And even if the white king moves closer, they simply do not have access to attacking you can't play it's a little bit of a blockade and even if they go to c5 they can't go to d5 or to d6 so it's pretty much stuck the viking can't do too much to helping now the knight instead goes for the weaknesses we got a very stranded and happy pawn here on h4 which is going to be falling you're going to be moving your king in action and attacking more weaknesses and it will be too difficult for white to resist and you should be winning here with black very, very uh, strong chances uh, uh, for uh, you to win in the previous puzzle. Let's look at this one now here. F5 has just been played, but it's not going to help black very much. You're going to play a move like G4, and if you may wonder why is this happening, well, if they take, you're going to take with H, and if they don't take, and if they push forwards, actually, very important now to understand, king needs to move closer to attacking this central pawn, it's very important for you to getting access with your king. You're going to be attacking now the bishop twice, knight and king. Only one defense, thus they have to move the bishop again. And now, unfortunately for them, again, knight thrives in making forks and double attacking. You attacking now this a little bit unhappy pawn on b7. And now here comes the magic. The knight works its magic with knight d7, targeting two weaknesses, the principle of two weaknesses, are once impossible for black to defend here. Uh, b6 hit once and the pawn on e5 is being attacked twice. Impossible for black to do nothing and thus you will be having two passes and a brand new queen. It's coming. Next uh, puzzle here. Now, if we just play this one correctly, we should be able to draw here. Another important idea. You notice that white has a bishop that moves on light squares so far so good we've got one two three four pawns three of them are on dark squares thus can't be attacked by the bishop but there is another pawn here on h5 which is on a light square so let's say you're going to play like a random move which you absolutely don't want to play random moves so if you play something like king c6 which kind of makes sense but there is a weakness you need to address and eliminate it otherwise you're going to lose the game it's this guy here which can be targeted by the bishop if you move king c6 they will be fixing that pawn on a weak square attackable by the bishop. Thus, you have to push it forwards. And now the pawn is on dark squares. All of your pawns are on dark squares, not attackable by the bishop. 
So you're doing absolutely fine now here. You should be able to just draw, play something like King C6, and no progress will be made, but you aren't going to lose the current position. Okay, let's have a look at this one here. Luckily, good news for uh, black. All of your pawns are on white squares. Look at that. And the bishop moves on dark squares, so you can't be attacked by the bishop. The knight would like to do something active, and luckily, if you look at this one, you should be able to spot a beautiful outpost for your knight, which is e4 which would be actually if your knight makes it to e4 you'll be able to target two weakness at once again the principle of two weaknesses very important in chess how do you get there well you can't go on the right hand side here because the bishop will take you straight away but luckily there is f6 available so let's just move the knight six here and whatever they play nothing can stop you from placing your knight on e4 targeting those two pawns the viking will not be able to defend them you can't be in two places at once neither in the physical world whatever physical world means and neither on the chessboard you can't be in two play by location not possible so this one of these two pawns will be dropping thus creating the necessary uh space column free file for your pawn to moving forwards let's moving on to the next one what is going on here well if you always need to watch your opponent's last move you will notice that the black king actually wants to gain access and attacking your uh, pawn structure so you mustn't allow this to happen so you gotta play knight to e3 you don't allow the bishop to move here on f5 because that would be trouble Okay, so they can't move down the board and you're doing absolutely uh, fine in the previous position. So uh, little, little details that matter absolutely here. So now, although we can move the king, I'd say knight to c4 is very important because it takes all those squares, especially the b3 and, uh, sorry, the b2 and a3 squares are very important. And even if the white king moves closer, you can always attack this bishop, which you're going to do it right now. And again, even if they move on the h6 c1 diagonal, that's already losing because then you can push it and get a queen. And they can't move on b2 and uh, e3 because the knight will capture straight away. Again, no point pushing forwards because that will be ending up in a draw. And you don't want to draw, you want to win if possible. Now you just simply capture the bishop. And even if they take your knight, you have one extra tempo that matters absolutely. You're going to push the pawn, then get yourself a brand new queen resulting in a win let's have a look at this puzzle which is strikingly similar with two puzzles ago again good news black pawns are on dark squares the bishop moves on light squares so you got no problem with the bishop attacking your pawns but what you do might have a little issue with is the white king that wants to activate going towards attacking your pawns how do you stop that very nicely knight to d6 and suddenly you deny the white king access you have a good king that actually would be just marching and marching and marching and some weaknesses will be created difficult for white to survive this and you should be winning the current position with the black pieces let's try one more time one last piece of exercise here black king played on f6 Count the attackers and defenders, and then you understand you can push this guy absolutely safely here. They will be capturing you with the pawn. You take it back with the pawn, pushing the black king back. Important to move your king onto e5, because let me just give you an idea. If by any chance you win the necessary tempos and the black king moves away from the e7 squares, you will be just placing nicely. Not a king to f6, knight will be playing potentially g2 and f4 and you will be targeting two weaknesses again very difficult for black to defend two weaknesses for anybody to defend two weaknesses at the same time so all these ideas guys i hope they are uh, useful for you don't forget to subscribe to this channel follow me on twitch as well so we uh, go live and you guys will be notified and we can actually play a couple of friendlies puzzles and arenas together and I hope that was useful. Bishop versus knight when the knight is better. Again, the position is closed. Your knight can gain um, nice outposts. And the opponent's king is being limited. And your opponent's bishop, as in this position here, is just a bigger pawn. So just for you to understand, it's actually, it's actually blocked by its own pawns here. So that will be a situation in which you're doing better with the knight rather than the bishop 
Okay, thank you very much for watching this video, guys. We'll be returning with more openings, middle game, or ending situations for us to discuss and understand together. Have a wonderful day. See you next time.